But let's talk about what is true. <laughs> More than a thousand new laws will go into effect. Uh, and we're going to kind of delve into some of them that are going to affect you, that are really going to affect you. And for more on the those new laws. We're going to turn our attention to criminal defense attorney Vic Bajaj, who is joining us this morning. Our big morning. legal brain here is with us. Happy <laughs> New Year to you. Happy, Happy New Year to you as well. Thank Welcome. you. Good morning. So of all these laws, which one strikes you the most interesting? Uh, I know we've got the, the especially the one that's making national news yes. is this the selling of pets yes. uh, oh, yeah. from from puppy mills. Right. And this is, we're the first state in the whole union to do this. Tell me about that. Well, basically what it says is if you are in the business of buying and selling pets to the general public, well, you have to acquire the pets from a shelter um, and this is really part and parcel to the logic of getting away from you know luxury ideas and taking care of our community and those pets and those loving souls that need a home to be in now th these pets may have come on in from disparaged homes they've been may have been mistreated but they should be the first in line and the state legislature has recognized that rather than for instance buying a four thousand uh, dollar Pomeranian that uh, may not be in as much of a need of a mm -hmm. helping home. I can imagine that shops, stores probably have pushback on this new law. I oh, mean, absolutely. To, uh, absolutely. Because yeah, it's big business. This yeah. breeding thing is a big business. Yeah. It is. And not only that, but there are certain dog lovers like myself. I'll tell you, I have two small Boston Terriers. And when I found them, I found them from a breeder in Groveton, Texas. And the reason for that was a number of champions and the bloodline mm. and the AKC pedigree that the dogs had. Now, that seems to be something that's lost in the uh, by the wayside here as far as those who need to make sure that they have as purebred as possible that may be a rub that we'll see work itself out mm -hmm. through local municipalities and laws the other big law too is the ignition interlock devices yes uh, let's talk about that because here in California there's been a pilot program they've been doing this in certain yes. uh, communities but now it's it's a, it's a law now it's going statewide right and let me just clarify for all the viewers an interlock an ignition interlock device iid what this does it is does not allow a car to operate unless the operator blows into the machine physically and there's a reading of less than the blood alcohol concentration percentage that's legal in the jurisdiction for instance here in san diego if an individual is required to have an iid installed on their vehicle as a mm -hmm. consequence of a criminal case probation or administrative requirement through the Department of Motor Vehicles. Mm -hmm. if so let, me, let me just stop yes. you there. Mm -hmm. If you've been busted for drinking and driving, you're going to get one of these in your cars, right? You're going to get one, okay. absolutely. Mm -hmm. But let me let me make one more clarification. Okay. You make a great point about it being a pilot program throughout different mm -hmm. counties in, San, in California. San Diego has, for all intents and purposes, already put this into play. Mm -hmm. If you have a DUI, surely one with injuries, you're going to have an IID installed. You know what I was reading, though, was that even first-time offenders, the judges will now have the discretion to say, you know what, we're going to install an interlock uh, device, this ignition interlock device. Yeah, first-time offenders. Absolutely. Whether misdemeanor or felony with serious injuries, a judge or magistrate has the right to set any reasonable conditions of bail. Because it's a criminal case, you don't, you have a right to bail, but a judge can incarcerate you if you don't agree to the terms of being on your own liberty. The terms have been, for quite a while, an interlock ignition device. Mm -hmm. Wow. And well, it's that protects cost everyone. What? That protects you. It protects the people that are around mm -hmm. you. So, yeah. yeah Absolutely. A lot of support for it. The, the blowback to this legislation is, you know, some people who have to go to work and, and they need their vehicle for work, they may be hampered by the very appearance of the mm -hmm. item on their vehicle, which could do away with potential clients yeah. wanting to do business with them. For instance, a realtor who may go around to different properties, take clients around, and, well, maybe I don't want to have someone who is blowing into an IID. But on balance... Uh, when you look at a utilitarian point of view, it is much more productive uh, for Californians to have the IID versus the objections that we may hear. All right, something that we've done a lot of coverage on, believe it or not, is plastic straws no yes. longer. Yes. Uh, so to, let's talk about that. Well, we talked to, in this very studio, we talked about plastic bags uh, yeah. two and yeah. a half years yeah. ago. Yeah. Now oh, we're yeah, talking right. about plastic straws. So unless you're in a fast food environment, you're going to have to ask the waiter or waitress for a plastic straw. Mm -hmm. Now, this 
this requirement and prohibition does not uh, cover the large umbrella of, for instance, paper straws, uh, hemp straws, which are sold throughout the country, and other types of straws that are not plastic-based. Of course, these are all biodegradable uh, entities and, and products. These are not plastic straws mm -hmm. that could find their ways into our streams and into our oceans. Yeah, I've seen the, the paper straws pop up. Yes. And more, you know, a lot, I think a lot of restaurants and, and eateries are yeah. already making that change. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, but. And now you have to be careful what you order because you have to make sure it tastes good with the paper, paper straw as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's kind of hard to drink a thick milk milkshake yes, it is. with it is. a milk paper straw. It is. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's yeah. a tough yeah. challenge. I mean, I, I have two kids and I know they always drink their yes. drinks with straws yes. just because they're all, you know, I don't want them to spill. Yes. So it's just something, it's the real, it's what it is. It's yeah. the law now, right? And, and it will be the norm by the halfway point of 2019. We won't talk about it anymore. It won't be much of a shock. It's already much put into place. We usually get used to everything. That's think, right. For the most part. Well, maybe not everything. <laughs> maybe not everything. I don't know. Anything else, Vic, that you think uh, stands out? I mean, uh, out of the thousand, the, the 1,000 new laws yes. that are taking effect, anything else that you think would be worth chatting about to kind of drive home? Absolutely. I think California has a lot of very good consumer protection laws that have been put on the books. For instance, we talked briefly about a patient's right to know. Hmm. And, you know, there has always been through the Department of Consumer Affairs, which regulates professional licenses in the state of California, unless it's the medical board or the state bar regulating attorneys or the Department of Real Estate or realtors, um, there has been a real lack of communication and transparency for professionals who may have suffered criminal convictions or have been under criminal investigation. We see this as a product of those who have been taken advantage of while, for instance, under anesthesia. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had a few local cases of chiropractors, dentists, doctors who have taken liberties and taken advantage of those who have been in a relative state of unconsciousness. And this law really says if there's something in the books that the patient should know to make an informed decision, the physician or treating professional has an obligation now proactively to tell potential patients. They would be required. Yep. All right. Vic Bajaj, Vic Bajaj, thanks so much. You. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Happy New Year to you and your family. Same to you Yay. as well. Thank you. Thank right. you.